Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Pokemon Battle Academy, also known as the Pokemon card game. It's two players, ages six and up, and it takes about 20 minutes. And I have brought along to guest star, my son Bradley, who is a Pokemon expert. Hi. The goal of the game is to defeat your opponent, and there are three different ways in which you can do so. You can win all of the prize cards. You get a prize card each time you defeat your opponent's active Pokemon. You get to take one card. On a standard game, there are six cards. Uh, in this game, on uh, intro game, we are only playing with four cards. You can win if you uh, defeat their active Pokemon and they don't have anyone on the bench to replace it then you win. And then also if their deck is exhausted, if they're supposed to draw a card and there are no cards to draw from the deck. Um, we are going to, my son Bradley has set up his side according to the booklet for an intro game. Mm -hmm. uh, he's placed four off to the side. You first, so he's playing on these. It says his is player one. I'm player two. Usually you would draw, uh, you'd, you'd set up and then you would flip a coin to see who got to go first. Uh, and also usually you would shuffle your cards. And what are you looking for in your cards, Bradley? Um, you're looking for the Pokemon that are basic to play onto your bench and active spot. Yeah, exactly. And so if you don't draw any basic Pokemon in a standard game, uh, then what happens? Then you do a mulligan, you just shuffle all the cards in your hand into the deck and then draw seven cards, and your opponent draws one card from your deck. Yeah, so it's it's pretty easy. Fortunately, if you have the cards um, in their numbered order, they have made sure that doesn't happen to you. It is a very nice, gentle entry level for uh, this beginning game. So we are following what they say to do in the instructions for the first few rounds. And then um, they only do that for the first few rounds and then you just, you have the basics down and you're able to pick up and go from there. Uh, so we're gonna lay our cards out like this. You can see they have all sorts of information on the cards, what type of Pokemon it is um, and what their different attacks are. So to start, um, my character is supposed to, you, you were placing them face up in a standard game. This would all be face down like until you started, correct. So um, replacing this, Bradley gets to be player one. And so um, go ahead and your first action is always to draw a card. And then I want to show he has another, um, one of his other decks, more advanced decks we got for him, I think explains the turn actions a little bit better uh, because first you draw a card and number two, according to this, is number two through six, you can do in any order, I think is a key thing to know. You can put a basic, po basic Pokemon onto like, your bench. Like this. So I can attach an energy and if I'm like, oop, I have a basic Pokemon in my hand, better play that, I can do with that. So. Correct, yeah. So it's any, it's any order. Um, how many energy do you get to you play? You can only attach one energy here to a any Pokemon in the per turn. Now your energy and my energy look different. Yeah. Why is that? Because they're different types. You need specific types of energy for Pokemon moves. Okay. Now then I what? have, would you be able to, if you had one of these in this your deck, would you be able to use it? Yes, I would. If it's one of these. Like the gray this, ones? Yep, the gray ones with the story. Well, I would be able to use that because that means you can use any energy in that place. Excellent. Okay. So, but again, what's so nice about these decks is they've made it for you. They've set it up so you don't have to worry about that. Just you put the energy out and you only have that one type of energy. So it, it all should work. Mm -hmm. So he's placed the energy. Um and we put it up above so you can see how much it's very mm -hmm. easy. Um, and then what else are you going to do for this turn, Bradley? Nothing, because you cannot attack on your first turn. Yes, excellent. Okay, so now we're going on to the next bit. I get to draw a card and I have um, more basic Pokemon to place down and um, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm not sure if this is according to the rules, but we're just going to put a few basics down because yeah. you might We'll just use as the active well. Pokemon stuff like how it they want us to do it. And then... And then I attach an energy and you are supposed to declare your attack. So I'm doing flop attack against Charmander. Ouch. And it takes 10 damage. Uh, is there any way for you to defend against that? Um, yes, if you have, like, a, say, an attack that you, there's, like, a thing where you flip a coin of heads to prevent all damage from this Pokemon. Uh, for specific turn. attacks, yes, yeah. but not for this one, right? Yeah. This, in this deck, also you can there isn't any of that. Also, you can like that. Right. There's a lot of different specialty items. This is an excellent time to talk about those. There are a bunch of special conditions that they include in the rules um, burned, poisoned, asleep, paralyzed, confused. They aren't super tricky and it doesn't even come up with the first two decks. So you don't have to worry about that for now. And when it is in one of the further decks, um, it's not in the Mewtwo deck. Though. And it's not in the Mewtwo deck either. So if you get a different deck and continue to play the game in the future, it might come up, but this is very but simple, easy way to burned play. Burned and poisoned is mainly in like, um, Deutsch type or Epoi and like fire type because okay. burned is like fire type thing. That makes sense. Okay, I attacked you, so my turn is over. What do you do? So I draw a card to start my turn. Ooh, I place that guy down. I am going to attach another energy to this guy, and then he is going to be like flame tail. And you and do 10 damage. Now, if I don't like that I'm getting damaged, can I just take my Pokemon away? Yes. What happens to my Pokemon? Well, you just swap it out with one of the other Benchy What happens Pokemon. to my energy? You have to discard the energy so, that is required. In some cases, it requires zeros. In some cases, it requires four, three, or two. Yeah, so there's not a ton of one. information on yeah. the Pokemon cards, but some of them, they show which cards they have weakness to or resistance to, which, again, does not come up in this. But retreat would cost one. So generally, it's not worth it. So make sure you don't do that. Um, now I'm going to draw a card. And I've gotten a trainer. You can only play one supporter card per round. And you just play it into your discard card. And this trainer allows me to draw three cards. One, two, three. It matters the type of trainer. There are three different types of trainer cards. Correct. So some of the other trainer cards you can play yeah. more of. Like um, the supporter item and then stadium okay so stadium you can play multiple if you wanted to play no. that in addition to this you could play it yeah. correct but this can only be one stadium in play okay perfect and but but only one supporter card you can play yeah right put it okay so now i have zeb Strika, which is the evolved version of blitzel and according to the rule book they don't have you evolving the pokemon right away um, they just have me placing another energy and um, performing an attack, uh, which is which is okay. That would be a zap kick. But if you had uh, evolved Zub Striker, which you could, right? Yeah. So this is where I wouldn't follow the rules on the, the, the directions in here because it's actually much better for this player to evolve Zub Striker. When I evolve him, do my um, does my damage go away? No. No, I keep the damage. Does my energy go away? No. I still have the energy. But I would like for you to lose your energy. <laughs> um, I know, that would be great. And in this, I mean, you just read what's on the card and you do what's on the card. Um, because I would get to perform a raid attack. And if this Pokemon evolved from Blitzel during this turn, this attack does 90 more damage. So that would be 120 and Charmander would be uh, KO'd. Um, at which point I would get to draw another card. Um, I get an energy card from over here. That's what they uh, ended up being over here, but it can be anything else. And, um, I don't lose my energy when I use it for attacks, right? Yep. Yeah. It just stays there. And the only way for it to go away is for, um, you to 
take out my Pokemon. Um, and can I, if I had gotten Blitz on Substrika at the same time, can I place them both down at oh, the same no, time? Oh, no, 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 no. No, you have to have them out for a turn before you can evolve them. But how many Pokemon can I evolve in a turn? Um, as many as you want, but they have to be different Pokemon. Okay, perfect. Um, and then besides that, um, going through your deck, you have a bunch of different trainers. Often you are shuffling your deck. So uh, it's that's, that's part of what you um, do. There are potions that can help heal your Pokemon. Um, there's bug catchers that allow you to draw cards. Um, Bradley, can you explain this very shiny card at the end and why oh, we are excited about it? That's a GX. You can use one GX attack per game, but usually GX attacks are pretty dang strong. And if they're not, they usually have very good abilities that happens when you attack. Correct, right? So this, yeah. my, um, it is Spark Ball GX. So it's 200 attack, and that's technically what this token is for. So yeah. once you've used it, then you'd be then you'd be done with the game. No, you'd be... No, you'd be like you couldn't use any more of these. Correct, correct. Here's what the end of the game might look like. It is my turn. I draw a card. I got an energy, which I'm going to attach to Pikachu over here. And I'm going to use my Electabuzz to do a thunder attack and take out uh, Salazzle. I'm feeling Dang pretty it. good about myself. I've got another card. I only need one more to win. Bradley would have to do something truly astounding here to defeat me. Um, go ahead, Bradley. It is your turn. You're okay. putting in another Pokemon. You get to draw so a card. I draw a card. I'm putting that guy there. I'm evolving this guy, and then I'm attaching an energy. Oh, dear. And then I am going to use Flame Thrower. Okay. And that does Let me 140 see. damage. Okay, so you have four energy. That's what you need. You're not using the GX attack. Because you only get to use that once. Yep. You're using your just standard flamethrower. Yeah. Um, which uh, my Electabuzz is gone now. Yep. Yikes. Wow. Okay, I have to pick somebody else to move in to my active spot. Otherwise, the game would be over. I draw a card. Oh, I got Raichu. Amazing how this just happened to happen. And I... I am very excited that I can do, I don't, I can't even attack another, ener attach another energy. I guess I'm just going to put this here. So I'm going to do my spark ball GX attack because I'm not messing around and do 200 damage against you. Ouch. Um, all right. But what happens now? It's your turn. You get to draw a card. So I draw a card. I am playing. I'm attaching an energy, and then I am going to play a potion. You want to heal your Pokemon, and you definitely always want to do well, that. Well, I feel like you're just rubbing it in at this point, because yep. you're going to do... Flare Bit Blitz GX, which does 300 damage. Oh, and Raichu is gone! Oh, no! And so, the this round, um, Bradley is the victor. Good job, Bradley. So that's how to play Pokemon Battle Academy, also known as the Pokemon card game. Uh, this is actually the first edition of these they came out with. There's also a second edition with just slightly different decks. And what's really nice about these is it's a really great price point for a bunch of Pokemon decks. And they're really well put together and Pokemon cards can be pricey. So it is a deal in and of itself for that. Uh, what would you say the target demographic for this I'd game is? I would say the target demographic is Pokemon fans like me. And uh, the rule complexity is medium, although this is easy. When you first get into it, I mean, they have the cards numbered. They really walk you through what you're supposed to do. But if you continue to play, there are additional elements to the game that really make it great so you can keep on playing the Pokemon uh, card game for years and years where different types um, have advantages against other types of Pokemon. They have special conditions. Uh, if you're poisoned, burned, sleep, paralyzed, confused, there's a, a bit going on with that, which isn't really complex or hard to understand, but it adds to the game. Uh, how competitive is this game, Bradley? It is very competitive. Yeah, uh, if it feels like somebody is trying to battle you to the death, uh, they kind of are. Uh, that's what the game is. Uh, that said, 
the replay value is high. Uh, it is so fun to play. I love battle games and this is just in with them. Uh, and it's especially fun. It's nice having the pre-made decks, but if you have a bunch of cards, uh, you can make your own decks uh, like Bradley does. What would you say you're supposed to have 60 cards in a deck. That's really the only criteria. You can do whatever you want besides that. Me, what do you usually do? Me, I usually do 30 Pokemon, 15 Adagy, and 15 Trainer Kari. Yeah, and you can, you can, so you make that as like a general outline, and then sometimes you add or increase or decrease one of them. We were playing with one of your specialty decks today, yeah. and we were thinking, oh, maybe fewer Pokemon, more energy cards. But you just, you get to play with it and kind of invent your own thing, which is just really fun and a great use for all of those Pokemon cards we have. Uh, similar games, if you like this. If uh, you're just going for the Pokemon side of things, there's a Pokemon version of Labyrinth uh, that doesn't use any cards, but you're going through a shifting maze and uh, they have a Pokemon version of it, which is really fun. And what else would you suggest, Bradley? I would suggest King of Tokyo. Yes, that is an excellent battle game where you have a bunch of different monsters and you're trying to be the last monster standing and it is super fun as well. But we've been loving playing Bo Pokemon Battle Academy. I've been getting to spend a lot of time with my son while playing it, which is the best part as far as I'm concerned. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time from Game Like a Mother. Bye.